Oakland up, and I thought maybe I'd just do a walk around the truck, showing all the where stuff's uh, stored and stuff like that. Everybody would certainly figure it out, and uh, but we'll just go through all the all the basic stuff. All right, we're in the uh, passenger seat here, and it's going to go over the gauges. Um, you know, this bounces around from red to green. It should mostly be green. Certainly, it'll get rich when you let off the gas. Um, you know, if it's always in the red, there's a problem. But uh, that's all been handled with the new ignition. All these gauges are clocked. Everything should pretty much be straight up and down at 12 o'clock. Um, the car's not on right now, but every, everything will pretty much be straight up and down. If it varies a lot uh, from that, then there's probably a problem. Um, you will notice the water temperature once the fan kicks on and off. That's automatic. Um, the temperature drops like a rock, so um, there's really a lot of cooling. Really, the only place we have uh, heating problems is maybe along uphill in, in the sand, deep sand. The tranny might start to get a little warm. So all these switches should be about at 12 o'clock. Now, going over to these switches here, everything will be up. Okay, the oil fan, that stays on all the time and is running right now. Um, the tranny fan also stays on all the time. Um, if you are, if it's nighttime and we're on the highway or something, if things get too cold, um, you could shut off this oil fan. But I, I doubt we're gonna see that. So the right-hand side, all the switches stay up. Now over here to the left-hand side, this switch is no longer used. And these two are top right and top left. So the LED, LED bar on the top, you can turn off half of it. Sometimes I like to drive with the driver's side off, it has a less glare. And then uh, these amber lights, there's and the clear light on the bottom front bumper, those stay on all the time during night. During the daytime, I'd have all these lights off um, so we have less draw on the alternator. Um, this work light turns on two little cab lights. And there's also a light um, under each fender that shines on the wheel. So maybe when you pull into a pit, it'd be a good time to uh, turn on the work light so they can see inside the wheel wells a little better. Um, scores saying that they're gonna penalize people if they're driving with their off-road lights on, on the highway or approaching checkpoints. So when you approach pits or checkpoints, I would just run the ambers only. Or if you're on the highway, just the amber. And there's breakers for each item that you just push back in if they trip. Uh, this is the siren. Right there. Um, you turn, if you flip it up, it stays on until you turn it off. Um, then right here we have the tire pressure monitor system. Um, so there's a, pr a sensor on the valve core outside of each wheel. And it pretty much will do nothing. It's not on right now. Um, until you have a flat. Uh, this little green light will be on. Um, there's no sensors on right now, but as long as it doesn't say anything, you're good. If you're on the highway and you want to check pressures, just use the up or down button and it'll go from corner to corner to corner and you could read off the pressures. Um, if you happen to push a button wrong, just leave it alone for a few minutes and it'll go back. That's why I recommend only touching it during smooth parts so you don't accidentally push the wrong button. Um, then right here we got the transmission dipstick and then we'll go over here to the co-driver's bag Let's see what we have in here uh, flashlight headlamp there's a little bottle cap tape to keep it from going on accidentally so you have to take that off there's that uh, tire deflator we were uh, stuck in the sand and wanted to deflate the tires. Um, to me, 12 pounds is where the tire starts to grow, where you get better flotation. Um, this is a 10 millimeter uh, socket. So if you do roll and are upside down at all, and you're, you're, the, the truck's upside down for more than a half a minute, you need to pull the spark plugs out before you start it. So this will pull the coil, the four coils off, and then and then take the 10 millimeter off and put the, the uh, spark plug socket on and pull the four spark plugs, turn it over, put them back in. Um, if you don't do that, the motor will blow and you will lose cylinders for sure. 
Also, um, this wrench takes off all the body panels and works all the DeZeus buttons, including the hood, which you would need uh, to take off to pull the uh, spark plugs out. And then some uh, flush cuts. Pretty much whenever you get out of the truck to do anything, if you're stuck or changing a tire or whatever, you're going to need to cut some zip ties, so bring these out with you. Um, next would be the radio. So <clears throat> this is the intercom, of course, and there is a driver isolate. Some of us like to drive with the with the driver isolated, but when you come into the pits or you're doing an uh, exchange, definitely make sure if you have the driver isolated to unisolate them when you come into the pits, so he can talk to those guys. Then uh, here's the radio. We're running fines double. Um, BFG would like you to, to go to their pit channel two miles out. So you just push this down. Oh, right there. There it is. And then uh, let me go back to finds double after that. Oh, yeah. Also in this um, co driver bag is a little uh, radio. There's only two channels on it, um, Weatherman and the Finds Double Frequency. Just it, uh, It's taped off so it won't accidentally turn on. But if, you, if you're stuck, I'd recommend taking this out so you can talk to the driver um, getting unstuck. Then also under the co-driver here is the tool bag. Um, the tools kind of a pain to get out of there but um just kind of got to get out and lean in and, and uh, pull that out and then right on your co-driver's left hand is a fire extinguisher the pin pulls out away from you and um you can pull that fire extinguisher out um that's it for the co-driver side all right now we're on the driver's side um start it ignition Running. Um, there's two fuel pumps. This right one has a sock on it inside the tank. Um, the left fuel pump does not. So I, I try to run it on the sock. But if you're having fuel pressure problems, I'll go up to here. If you run out of gas, try the other one. Um, the, the sock is lower, I believe, inside the fuel cell, just a little bit. Um, this blue light doesn't do anything. The yellow lights would come on if the alternator problem and the red light for an oil pressure problem. Um, push to talk for the radio. Of course, you don't need to push it to talk to the co-driver, just to radio out. This does nothing. Um, then the battery switch. So we have two batteries. Um, this is off. This is the right battery. This is the left battery. And straight down, is both. However, we always run it on just one battery and never try to never go to both. So if you have a problem, you think it might be the battery, um, go from left to off to right. And there's a, a nub of silicone on the top that you can just feel because you can't really see down there. And then there's a, that dimmer switch on the floorboard that doesn't do anything for this race. And uh, foot feed, brake, and uh, foot rest there. All right, Blake. In this uh, driver's bag, there's a headlamp <laughs> and some flush cuts. What do we got here? Now, also, if you look back over at the passenger side, you can see the bracket up there on the handle for the um, Stella, which we don't have yet. And then below that, the red button, which is uh, the push to talk. Um, for the co-driver and then uh, you know on the GPS I think the GPS will be full definitely when Dave gets in so I would delete all way waypoints delete all trails and then load from card uh, your, your free run notes and the course map uh, sun visor and that's about it we'll go over to the front all right here on the front there's a 
toe strap. I think we're going to leave it here all ready to go. So you just take your flush cuts, cut these two, three zip ties, and unwind it when it's, it's already fastened there. This is the deal where it weaves inside of itself. You weave it in like four times through there, and it's supposed to hold. That's it for that. The truck. Got a couple Mac straps here. You'll need the flush cuts to um, cut some zip ties. You're just bungeed on. Spare tire. Behind the spare tire is the reflective triangle. Um, we got a tow strap right here. There's a tow strap on the other side. Um, the jack. Okay, notice the two arrows on the jack. Got to be lined up. And this handle needs to be all the way down for that to come out. So, you pull this up. Okay, before you turn on the jack, really important here, I'm sure everybody knows, but before you, you have to cut this zip tie with your flush cuts and this red one, the red and yellow one, you turn this off, okay, off perpendicular to the, to the valve body and screw this in and the jack comes up. Then when you're done, you screw this back out, okay, which doesn't let it out anymore, and open this, and you can push the jack down. Just like that. And then we got a spare air bottle right here. You know, if you if you end up using two bottles trying to get unstuck or whatever, um, make sure you radio in. There's a spare bottle in each uh, chase truck. And, but they'll have to uh, use the 5 16 uh, nut driver and re put it in the, the mount. There. A couple spare lug nuts right here. Um, there's also spare lug nuts in the tool bag underneath the passenger. Here's some zip ties. I need to bend that. Uh, water for um, driver and co driver. Probably will need to fill that up at some point during the race. Um, you got two oils and two power steering fluids, and a fire extinguisher over there, of course. And then also under the spare tire here is a spare drive shaft. Um, and inside the uh, tool bag under the co-driver is all the tools to replace it. Better not to break it, really. These bolts work on the uh, drive flange out of the underdrive. However, there are extra bolts in the uh, tool bag as well. This is on top of the lower link where it mounts to the chassis. On each side, there's a grease fitting. And at the three driver exchanges, um, I want to just put a pump of grease inside each of those grease certs. And then maybe put like four at the drive shaft on the back. At the Scorpion Bay Pit, in addition to greasing the two lower links, the drive shaft. Um, we also want to put some grease on the power steering rack. So there's one greaser here, there's one up in there, and one up in here. Just like two pumps at each one. And uh, just two pumps at each lower link, and maybe four at the drive shaft of Lucas Red. Okay, at the uh, Scorpion Bay driver exchange, um, and in uh, Chase 3's pit. There's a, a cord of Mobile One, so I want to add one quart of oil. You just pop this, and it's right there. Going back over there is a little adapter to put transmission fluid in through the dipstick. I don't think we'll need to add any, but if something happens, that, that's where we put that in. Here's the uh, two jacking points um, for the rear, and it's similar in the front, um, pretty obvious. Also, co-drivers, you want to make sure you don't drop a rag um, down there because the exhaust is right there. And um, I feel it could maybe catch on fire. And uh, also, underneath the driver is um, <coughs> a survival bag in case you were to get stuck with some snacks and stuff like that in there. And um, lastly, the tire pressure monitor sensors. You know, make sure you take that off the wheel that's flat and put it on the spare that you're putting on just screw it on hand tight as tight as you can get it 
and uh, it'll just automatically start working. All right, see you guys in Baja.